Greetings, everyone. Uh, that would be the largest you're on mute of all time. I guess that's uh, the, what happens when you have a virtual event such as this. As I said, uh, and you didn't hear me, I am coming to you from the traditional territory of the Lekongan speaking people, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nation. I want to thank MLA Nicholas Simons for getting us started with that beautiful musical interlude. And I want to thank all of you for coming together in this virtual ceremony so that we can acknowledge this solemn day. I also want to especially thank our community partners, the Center for Jewish and Israeli Affairs, uh, for Israel and Jewish Affairs, I, I should say, for helping us get this together this year and in previous years to make it part of the institution of the Legislative Assembly here in the province of British Columbia. On Yom HaShoah, we remember the six million lives, Jewish lives, that were lost during the Holocaust. And we also remember and honor the millions who lost their lives and were murdered because of their ethnicity, social, uh, sexual identity, or disability. And today we also pay tribute to Holocaust survivors. And as that community grows smaller, it's all the more important that we work together with carry that message forward that we will never forget and it will never happen again. Especially in light of the ongoing threats of violence and discrimination Jewish people are facing worldwide today. Here in Victoria, the Victoria Chabad Center was desecrated by anti-Semitic graffiti just this week on the eve of Yom HaShoah. These are the types of acts that we must stand together and fight against with a united voice, regardless of where we come from, regardless of our orientations or our ethnicity or our faith, we must stand against anti-Semitism and anti-racism whenever we see it. While COVID-19 prevents us from coming together this year, it's important that we gather and honor those and remember that we give strength to each other when we come together on days like today. Building a more peaceful world starts with acknowledging the past and learning from our history. British Columbia's diversity, of course, 
is our province's greatest strength. Any, everyone deserves to live free from fear, oppression, and fully accept their place and their cultural identity in the province of British Columbia. As we light the candles of Yom HaShoah in remembrance, we must remain vigilant. And as we take action today and honor those who've lost their lives and honor those who have struggled since the Holocaust, we must again remember that we cannot repeat our past. Thank you very much. I look forward now to remarks from my colleague MLA, Michael Lee from uh, Vancouver Langara. Thank you for inviting me to speak on this solemn occasion. It is truly humbling to join with you today, even virtually speaking to survivors of the Holocaust, as well as to the descendants of survivors and those who carry the torch of their memories to ensure that not only do we never forget, but that every day we continue to fight against all forms of bigotry, racism, and anti-Semitism. Today is the 27th day of Nisan in the Hebrew Academy, the Hebrew calendar, Yom HaShoah, Holocaust and Heroism Remembrance Day. With each year that passes as we gather together to commemorate this day and remember one of the most heinous acts in human history, we are sadly joined by a dwindling number of survivors. And as the living memory of the Holocaust fades, the important act of remembering and coming together each year grows in importance. It is our collective responsibility to ensure that we never forget and such a thing never happens again. Because sadly, this is not just about remembering history, but standing together today against the racism, bigotry, and anti-Semitism that still exist in our world. Adding to what has been a very difficult and challenging year for so many reasons, we've tragically seen hate crimes are on the rise in North America and Europe. Right here in Vancouver, we have an increase of 97% in 2020. There continue to be incidents in our own community of anti-Semitism and other forms of racism, including at Riverview Park in South Vancouver and the Chabad Center in Victoria. And this is unacceptable. As a community now and every day, we must stand against these acts of hate and bigotry. Today on Holocaust and Heroism Remembrance Day, we are reminded of why it is so important to come together to reflect and ensure that the past is not forgotten. We must remember both the parts of this dark history that we must not let be repeated and the acts of heroism that took place amidst such tragedy. Because even during, one's, during one period of humanity's darkest chapters, there is still good in the world. People who risk their lives to hide and save others from the Shoah, amidst the horrors and atrocities, there are tales of love, hope, and bravery including with the many righteous among nations, people who demonstrated that light can triumph over darkness. So today, as we reaffirm our commitment to never forget, we remember the victims, the survivors and the heroes, and we pledge to build a better world in their memory. Words uh, from your heart. I will also now like to call on uh, Robert Krell to light the memorial candles. Robert, and on behalf of the BC government, I will light the seventh cancel, candle rather, to honor the millions of Roma, Slavic, LGBTQ2+, and people with disabilities who lost their lives.
Next, I will invite Rabbi Dan Moscovich uh, to lead us in prayer. And before he begins, I want to congratulate him on his Canadian citizenship. Thank you, Premier Horgan. Thank you, Premier Horgan, members of our provincial government and honored survivors. It is heartbreaking for me that today of all days, while I am here virtually with you, commemorating Yom HaShoah, the atrocities committed by the Nazis, the Chabad House in Victoria, as we have mentioned, was defaced with anti-Semitic graffiti at the beginning of the week. When incidents like this take place, I am always left thinking about the difficult conversations we need to have with our community and our children. Speaking about the Shoah and anti-Semitism is never easy. The act of remembering is important, particularly as we move towards a more just and equitable society. To do that requires action against all forms of hate and to take action, we need words and definitions to guide us. In that case, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism, I think is the tool that guides us in our work to combat anti-Jewish sentiments. And so in the name of the 6 million Jews we memorialize today, and on behalf of their descendants here in British Columbia, Jews who encounter increasing anti-Semitism of historic proportions, I want to urge our provincial government to join other jurisdictions in embracing the action that is required to combat both historical and contemporary hatred of the Jewish people. In just a moment, and it really is just a moment, I will chant two traditional Jewish memorial prayers adapted for this solemn occasion. The second prayer is a version of the mourner's Kaddish that includes the names of the death camps where six million Jewish people, more than one million of them young children, were murdered by the Nazis. The first prayer, El Malay Rachamim, is a prayer for the souls of those who were murdered. When we think of the death of a human being, we mourn the loss of the body and the soul. But in my work, Standing with too many grieving families at graveside, it is not the body that we miss, not the body that we miss most. That is merely the vessel for the soul, the part of that person that is unique in all the world. That's the part that we fall in love with and are forever changed by. The soul of another leaves an imprint on our heart. And so today we remember six million murdered Jewish souls, their light that has been extinguished, their dreams unrealized, their loves and relationships gone forever. We pray that those dear souls are comforted and embraced tachat shechina, under the wings of God's presence and that now, remembered so publicly, will never be forgotten. If you are able to, please rise. El malei rachamim, shochein bamromim, hamitzeheim inachanechonaha, Tachat kanfecha shechina, b'ma'alot kedoshim u'techorim, kezocha harakia mazkerim, esh nishmot shisha milyon achenu v'chayotenu, shehergu el kedush Hashem, ba'al harachamim yasterechem, Beseta can a fabro la mehim, right sore, beats roar, ha ha yehim, et nishmataham, Adonai, una halataham, we are nuach, Vishalohom, Amishkavaham, the no more amen. Fully compassionate God on high, to our six million brothers and sisters murdered because they were Jews. Grant clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven. Source of mercy, forever enfold them in the embrace of your wings. Secure their souls in eternity. Adonai, they are yours. They will rest in peace. Amen. And now we continue with the memorial prayer, Kadish Yatom, Ashoah. Yitkadal, Auschwitz. Yitkadash. Lodz, Shemei Rabbah, Ponar, Ba'alma Divra Hirute, Babiyar, Yamlich Machute, Maidanet, Bachayechon of Yomechon, Birkenau, Uvhaye de Kol Beit Israel, Kovno, Ba'agala Ubizman Kariv, Genoskaya, Bimru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah Mevarach Le'alam Ulamei Omaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach, Theresienstad. 
Bit pa arvit roman, buchen vol. Bit nase, bit hadar, treblinka. Bit ale, bit bit alal, vilna. Shemeda kudisha, brichu, bergen belsen. Le ela, mathausen. In kol birchata ushirata, dachau. Tishpachata venechamata, minsk. Yamru, yamal, yamama, warsa, bimaru. Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vachaim Aleinu Vyoko Yisrael, Bimaru Amen. O say Shalom Bimroma, Huya a say Shalom, Aleinu Vyoko Yisrael, Rokoyosh Veteva, Bimaru Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. And now I'll call upon uh, Robert Krell, Krell once again to offer his reflections on this solemn day. Junior Horvath, <clears throat> Honorable MLAs, Selena Robinson, Nicholas Simmons, and Michael Lee, Rabbi Moskowitz, Annabelle Wind, fellow survivors, members of the Legislative Assembly, dear friends. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words on behalf of Holocaust survivors, those who survived the Shoah, which is Hebrew for catastrophe. While it is relatively well known that there were 6 million Jewish victims, there is less awareness <clears throat> that 1.5 million were children. They were murdered in the most gruesome and hideous manner in all the countries under Nazi domination. The youngest did not know they were Jewish, but they did know suffering. Only 7% survived. I was particularly, particularly fortunate to be hidden with compassionate Christians in the Hague Hollow, and even more fortunate that my parents survived in hiding also. That was a miracle. Over 80% of Dutch Jews were deported and murdered. Of about 24,000 in hiding, over half were betrayed, including Anne Frank and her family in Amsterdam. Of her family, only her father survived. Of mine, I had lost all grandparents, uncles, and aunts. One first cousin remained. The war left its mark, and I bear special responsibility to remember what happened and try to derive lessons from that unfathomable tragedy. The Holocaust was unique in its objectives, its focus, and its ferocity. Jews were extracted wherever they resided, whether Paris, Prague, or Vienna whether city or countryside, or the Isles of Rhodes or Corfu. The enemy pursued us and tortured and murdered without mercy, without exception. Our liberation came at the hands of the Canadians on May 5, 1945. The Dutch are forever indebted, and they never fail to acknowledge their saviors. The Canadian role and acted with great sacrifice should be cherished and taught more diligently here. What also deserves remembering is that Canada, as others, failed prior to the war to extend compassion to Jewish refugees, particularly those who were turned away after having reached these shores on the ship St. Louis. And during the war, in 1942, the Vichy government in France began rounding up Jews and deporting them to the east. Thousands of children were left behind in internment camps. Canada was urged to accept several thousands. Bureaucratic entanglements plus an unhealthy dose of anti-Semitism prevented their rescue as refugees. None made it to these shores. Only after the war, were arrangements made to bring war orphans here. Canadian Jewish Congress was not able to fill the established quota for the French Jewish children. They had all been murdered. For us, liberation was not so liberating. The post-war years brought only confirmation of unimaginable loss. We lived in an atmosphere of death. My parents decided to immigrate to Canada in 1951, and here I am, precisely 70 years later. 
I was certainly one of the most eager immigrants to ever hit these shores. While my parents had to start over again, for me, it was the beginning. Everywhere I saw opportunity. Where else could one get after school jobs, earn enough money to go to university and medical school, become a specialist and return to become a professor of psychiatry at UBC. But the Holocaust does not leave a survivor without lasting consequences. We live on high alert. We worry over every fresh incident of anti-Semitism. In these times of COVID-19, we see hints of the other virus that will not rest. The virus that represents Jew hatred also spreads and mutates. And the vaccine of remembrance and education is in short supply. Elie Wiesel, the late Nobel Peace Prize winner and once an inmate of Auschwitz and Buchenwald, was asked by a physician how to treat a survivor. Wiesel answered, listen to them, listen carefully. They have more to teach you than you them. In Auschwitz, where at least 1.1 million people were murdered, there was a place called the Canada Compound, Canada spelled with a K. It held the treasures, clothes, and food brought on the deportation trains by the hapless victims most murdered upon arrival. The compound was named for Canada by the inmates who slaved there. For their in their imagination, Canada was the land of abundance. They knew they were right. And Canada was there in Auschwitz. I worked most of my career in the Health Sciences Center Hospital, UBC Department of Psychiatry, as Director of Child Psychiatry. As fate would have it, Dr. Rudolf Verba worked next door in the Pharmaceutical Sciences Building. I knew him for 30 years. Rudy was in Auschwitz for 21 months, escaped with Alfred Wetzler to warn the world of the imminent murder of Hungarian Jewry the last large Jewish community in Europe. After the March 1944 invasion of Hungary, the Germans, while in retreat from the Soviets and the Allies, ramped up the machinery of deportation and murder to new heights, or better, new lows. 430,000 Hungarian Jews were murdered between late April and early July, 1944. And note that D-Day was June 6, 1944, in between. The Verba Wetzler report, known as the Auschwitz Protocols, failed to halt the deportations until the Allies acted on the information in early July. Rudy wrote a book in 1963, I Cannot Forgive. It reissued later as I Escaped from Auschwitz perhaps one of the most important books of the 20th century. What did Rudy teach me? Robert, I worked in the Canada compound. Did you know it was the largest fur store in Europe? He knew my dad was a furrier. It was not only the greatest murder, it was also the greatest robbery. Robert, let me describe Auschwitz. It was the place where everything was permissible. Try that in your imagination. Everything permissible for the persecutor, none for the persecuted. We in British Columbia had in our midst the most important survivor witness to the Holocaust. While with us, he taught hundreds of BC students reached thousands, perhaps millions, through his participation in documentary films, such as Lanzmann's Shoah. I ask you, parliamentarians, our leaders, my fellow citizens, learn from all that has happened. The observance of this day serves as a reminder to learn from those times that the impossible is indeed possible. And remember, where anti-Jewish sentiment flourishes, others are never far behind. In only the last few months, 
we have seen. T-shirts bearing the name Auschwitz worn by insurrectionists in the attack on the US Capitol, an invitation to the former British leader, Jeremy Corbyn, an avowed anti-Semite who was turfed from his own party. He was asked to participate in a panel chaired by a Canadian parliamentarian. And this week's federal NDP deliberations that include resolutions opposing the definition of anti-Semitism as determined by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and widely accepted. As a survivor who has been deeply involved in Holocaust remembrance and education, it strikes me as unconscionable not to accept the IHRA definition to assist us all in recognizing the signs and symptoms of the scourge of Jew hatred. It is my hope that we will soon see the provincial government's adoption of the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. To date, 34 countries around the world, including Canada, have done so, as has the province of Ontario. Let us be cautious. Canada was there in Auschwitz in the minds of the inmates. We do not need Auschwitz in the minds of our fellow Canadians, except as knowledge of what is possible when hatred is not contained and racism runs wild. On behalf of our survivor community, we thank the government of British Columbia for its readiness to learn and to remember. It is for the good of all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, uh, for your reflections today. Uh, profoundly moving to hear your stories and your, your understanding of the challenges that Yom HaShoah presents for all of us. And I applaud uh, your commitment and the commitment of all of us who have been here today to acknowledge this solemn occasion, to ensure that it never happens again, to make sure that we stand in solidarity against racism, against hate, against anti-Semitism. And to conclude our ceremony this year, we have a special musical performance by Annabelle Wind, the granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor. And she will perform Ali Ali to conclude our ceremony today. Over to you, Annabelle. Eli, Eli, Shelo Igamer Leolam, Achol Vehayam, Rishush Shelam. This world never ends. The sand and the sea, the rush of the 